Conducting interviews remotely with your guests has become more and more popular in podcasting in the last few years. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the three best ways I recommend recording your guests remotely, and I'll help you choose which one is right for you depending on your situation. The first method is using a locally recording online recording service. So these services like Riverside, Zencaster, and Squadcast have grown in popularity recently as an alternative to basic online calling software like Zoom, Google Meet and Teams. What sets these services apart is rather than recording everything over the internet and having your network connection affect the quality of the recording, they record the video and audio locally on each participant's computer and then it uploads it to the service, meaning that the result you get out of it at the end isn't susceptible to network issues. So basically you're getting a better recording with these services than you would with Zoom or Teams or Google Meet. The caveat of these services is that generally they cost more and a lot of the alternatives like Google Meet are free to use anyway. There are a few options like Riverside and Squadcast that do have a free tier, although they're normally a little bit limited. And the other thing is that they can be a little trickier, especially for guests to set up than something that they might be more familiar with like Zoom. With these services like Riverside, you can often experience a little bit more lag during the recording itself as well because you're constantly uploading that high quality video and audio throughout the call. The result you get at the end is generally a higher quality though. Of the three options that I mentioned, Riverside, Squadcast and Zencaster, and there are a bunch of other ones out there as well. Riverside is the one I'm leaning towards at the moment because it's simple to use. It's got one of the more simple interfaces out of all of them and it also has quite a robust free tier. The only real issue with it is that it's only compatible with Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge browsers, which is hopefully something that they'll change in the future. Let's take a quick look at how to set up and record an online call with a guest in Riverside. So once you've signed up and logged into Riverside, on your left, you'll see a list of your studios. And these are like your digital recording studios. So you can create different setups for different podcasts. But for most podcasters, just one studio will be fine. And if you click on the three dots next to the studio, you can change the settings, you can change the name, you can change the quality of the audio and video recording. If you want more detail about the exact settings that I recommend to optimize your setup, I'll leave a link in the description below to a video that goes over that. And then once you click on go to studio, it will give the opportunity to check that you're using the right camera and microphone and that your headphones are plugged in. I always recommend using headphones. And then you can turn off echo cancellation, which will give you a higher quality recording. In your studio, it will be giving a studio link which you can share with your guests. You can add this to your Calendly or whatever scheduling app that you use to book guests or you can just email it directly to your guest and then once they've joined in you'll also be able to control some settings on their end as well and just make sure that your audio level when you're speaking normally is hovering around the middle if it's pushing up into the red it's going to be at risk of distorting and you'll just want to turn down your microphone until it's around the middle. Be sure to name your recording up on the top right so that once it's saved, it doesn't get mixed up with all your other recordings. And I recommend taking a test recording when you click on the record button, there'll be an option for that just to make sure everything looks and sounds right. And then you can take your recording. And you'll notice that at the top of the screen, there's a sort of uploading meter that shows that it's recording the audio and video locally on your computer to avoid any network issues affecting the recording and then re-uploading it. And then once you've finished, just make sure you click stop recording and then just ask your guests to leave the tab open or keep them on the call until the files have been uploaded. I will leave a link in the description to all of these options if you feel that this is the right way for you to go. But now let's take a look at the second method of recording your online podcast interviews. But just quickly before we do, if you head over to claracast.com forward slash kickstart, you can download the podcast kickstart guide and learn more about how to record amazing sounding episodes for your podcast. It goes over all the essential gear that you need, microphone recommendations, choosing the right software. It just goes more into detail about what you'll learn in this video. 
it goes over how to record your podcast and and setting up and making sure it sounds as good as possible and a bunch of extra tips as well so again that's claricast.com forward slash kickstart to download it for free if you want to prioritize ease of use something that you know your guests will be familiar with then zoom might be the way to go for you and no it's not going to get you as high quality recording as the previous options we've mentioned but the reason why i recommend zoom over the other more basic offerings like teams or google Meet is that zoom can get you a pretty good result these days there are a lot of settings options that you can change to tailor the recording you can turn on original sound for musicians in the audio recording settings which is going to give you a higher quality result there's also a setting to record a separate file for each participant so like the more advanced uh, online recording software like Riverside, with Zoom, you can record each speaker to a separate file, meaning that it's much easier to edit and you can remove interruptions and coughs and things like that that only happen on one side of the conversation. And this option isn't available on Teams or Google Meet. I will leave a link in the description to a video where I go over more in detail the best settings to use for Zoom. So Zoom, if you want something that's easy to use, you're maybe just getting started and your guests are typically those who aren't quite as tech savvy, um, then Zoom can be a good option. You can still get a good recording out of it. The micro microphone and the room and your camera are going to be the things that most affect your recording quality anyway. Again, it's not the highest quality option out there, but out of the more basic online recording and calling softwares, Zoom is the best one. And last but not least, it's all of the participants recording locally on their computers. So this method gets you the highest possible quality recordings. So the way it works is that the participants would be calling each other over any software, so whether that's Zoom, Google Meet, Teams, even on the phone, but then you'd be recording your audio and video locally on your computer. So each participant would have a digital audio workstation open on their computer, like Audacity, Reaper, or GarageBand. They'd hit record and record their microphone directly onto their computer, avoiding any kind of network issues, and you can record in the highest quality possible. And then you'd do the same with the video. So if you have a camera or you're setting up your phone, you just film directly to your camera. OBS is also an option. It's a screen recording software. It can also record from through your webcam and you can also set up a digital camera or your phone as a webcam so that you can record it directly to your computer. And I'll leave a link in the description to a piece of software that lets you do that. And using OBS works great if you have some kind of, if you're sharing some kind of graphics during the call, um, because it can also record your screen and you can even have your face recordings in the corner of the screen, like I do in some of my videos. And this third method gives you total control over how you're recording, and it also gives you the highest quality recording possible. And then you just have to collect all of those audio and video files together and send them to whoever's gonna be editing it. Now, this obviously takes a lot more work to put together. If you were getting interview guests that you don't know, um, or they're less tech savvy, then you probably wouldn't wanna be asking them to do all this. This is ideal for if you're co-hosting a podcast and yeah, so you're recording with the same person each week. You can get your setup nailed down and you can both just record that high quality audio and video directly to your computer. It means you don't even have to pay for another service as well. If you do want to go for this method and you're not sure which software to go for, or you haven't used a digital audio workstation or audio recording software before, Audacity is a good option, very simple to use. Um, that works on any operating system. I'll leave a link in the description to a, a free course on YouTube that goes over how to record with Audacity if you do want to give it a go. And then OBS, you can find at obsproject.com. This is the software that I was talking about that allows you to record your screen and your webcam. Uh, and it's free and again, it's open source and available on any operating system. And then once you've installed OBS, it should automatically allow you to screen capture your monitor. So by default, you should have the display capture showing, which is going to capture what's on your screen. Um, and if you don't have your webcam set up, you can click on the plus and add a new source, which in, in this situation is going to be a video capture device. And then you can adjust. So if you want to uh, just record your screen, uh, you can do that. You can turn them off and on. 
and if you just want to record your webcam you can do that as well alternatively as i mentioned you can simply just record using your phone uh, and then just copy over the file uh, after recording and that's probably going to give you a better video quality than your webcam would anyway but even if you are using one of the first two options like zoom or riverside anything like that you could still record locally your audio to your computer and then on your side at least you can use that full quality audio these things are changing all the time in terms of which software is best the companies that make this software they bring out different features they copy each other's features um, so at time of recording these are the best options that i recommend but i've based the video more on your situation rather than the specific software so you know if you feel like the higher quality locally recording online calling software is for you then you could try a few of those different options and see which one works best and then if you're recording locally obviously any digital audio workstation that you're comfortable would do the job. So which of these three methods are you going to be using to record your podcast? Let me know in the comments. And for more podcast recording tips, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.